And this image here shows a fly wall. As you can see, it's pushing water downwards, and this is helping provide an upward force on the person to help him stay up in the air. The physics behind this is very similar to the helicopters, drones, and even birds flying. So we're going to look at what's going on. So firstly, we can see the board is pushing the water downwards. So imagine a cylinder of a water like this, and that's being pushed downwards. And according to Newton's third law, this means there's going to be an equal opposite force on the board upwards. Okay, that's Newton's third law. Another way to think about it is, if we assume that the water initially started off at rest, it got accelerated, it got pushed downwards so that it speeded up to a velocity v. And let's say that the mass of water being pushed downwards each second is m. Then we can use this equation to actually calculate the force being applied to the, for, uh, to the water and therefore also the equal and opposite force being um, applied to the board as well. In this example, I'm going to go through the maths behind the flyboard. We have two nozzles, each with an area of 2.4 times the power of minus 3 meters squared. The water is being fired at downwards at a speed of 15 meters per second. Calculate the maximum mass the person using the flyboard can have. We can assume that the water is initially at rest and the density of the water is also given 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, we have to assume that it's firing like a cylinder of water downwards like this. The cross-section area is the same as the cross-section area of the nozzle, which is 2.4 times over minus 3. Okay, it's been down, fired downwards at 15 meters per second. We're going to use this equation to calculate the force, and which is going to help us figure out the mass of the person. The water is initially at rest, so 0 meters per second. So that means this part basically cancels out as just 0. The time. Now, I'm going to, this is what we call a continuous flow problem. And it really helps if you let time equal one second in this example. Okay, if you let time equal one second, we're going to use this for the rest of the question to really help simplify the problem. So we can just rub this out because if it's one, it doesn't, it's not going to affect anything there. The final velocity or the velocity at which the water is leaving is 15 meters per second. The mass of the water being fired outwards is the density of the water times the volume. The density of the water is 1,000 the volume of the cylinder here okay so that's going to be cross section area times the length we've got the area but what is the length uh, if so we're trying to find the length of this cylinder so if it's fire, fired downwards at 15 meters per second and we're using continuous flow problem where we're letting time equal one second that means each second 15 meters of water is going to come downwards so we should be using 15 as our length there. Okay, that's the secret to solving this. So if we do the cross-section area times 15, we get the area or the volume as 0.036 meters cubed. Okay, great. Now we've got the volume, we've got the density, we can figure out the mass of the water being fired downwards. So multiply it together, that's 36 kilograms of water being fired downwards per second, times it by 15, which is the speed it's coming out, out downwards at, and that gives us a force of 540 newtons her nozzle, but there's two nozzles, so multiply that by two. So total force being generated upwards is going to equal 1,080. Okay, now we're going to, that's going to help balance the mass of the person, so we're going to make it equal to mg. Now, this m here is the mass of the person. Okay, divide both sides by g, that gives us 110 kilograms. Okay, we've got another example here. We've got a drone. This example is going to be a bit more difficult, but the physics is basically the same. Okay, the drone has a mass of five kilograms. It's got four rotating blades. The diameter of the uh, blades is given, and the drone is actually accelerating upwards at two meters per second squared. We need to calculate the speed at which the air is being blown downwards. Okay, assume the air is initially at rest, and we've got the density of the air as well. So this drone is actually speeding up upwards. A common mistake a lot of students do here is they just do mass of the drone times acceleration and they think that's the force being generated. However, remember, this, it's got its weight as well. So you know, that's why it's important to draw a free bar diagram. So it's got a weight of 5 times 9, 9.81 downwards. So the thrust not only has to overcome this, but it has to also provide the resultant force upwards to accelerate upwards as well. So the resultant force is going to be thrust minus the weight and that's going to cause acceleration. So if we rearrange this, then we get a thrust force here, 59.05 that needs to be generated. But however, there's four blades, so each one has to only generate a quarter of this. So if we divide that by four, each blade is going to have to generate 14.763 newtons. And now for the hardware, we're going to have to find the speed at which the air is being pushed downwards. Let's assume that as a cylinder of air being pushed downwards by each blade at speed v. We're going to use this equation 
force equal to the rate of change in momentum to find the force. And the force that we generate is actually 14.763 newtons from each blade. The initial velocity of the air that's being pushed downwards was zero, and then it got speeded up. Now, because that's zero, that means we can just rub that part out, it doesn't matter. And then it's a continuous flow problem, right? So, like I said, it really helps if you let time equal one second. Okay, so we can ignore that as well for now. Okay, so mass. Mass is density times volume. We've got the density of the air. The volume is cross-section area times the length. The cross-section area of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared, or pi times the diameter divided by 2 squared. So in this case, 8 centimeters of diameter, so turn that into meters by divided by 100, and then divide by 2 to turn to radius and then square it. If we do that, we get a cross-section area of 5.07, uh, 0.27 times into about minus 3. Now, what about the length? Okay, so the length of this cylinder here, because air is being pushed down at some speed v, we can determine the distance it travels by doing velocity times time. But because it's a continuous flow problem, this is why we did it, we let time equal one second, that just means the length of the air is v, it's the velocity, okay, because one times the velocity is equal to the length, so that's just v. Okay, so we're going to multiply by v there, okay. Now, if we put that into the equation, we'll just join it all together. So you get uh, the mass of the air, which is the density times the cross-section area times the speed, which is acting as the length right now, times the speed that's already there from the momentum. So it's actually V squared. Okay, so I've simplified now. So I've got the force is equal to all the numbers joined together times V squared. Okay, now divide both sides by that 6.032 times of minus three, and then square root both sides and you get a speed that the air needs to come out downwards at is 50 meters per second, and is the minimum.